uh, into Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, we're going to start in verse 8 and read down to verse 14. Can you find your places if you'll stand with me in reverence to God's Word? Yeah. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Ye soldiers of the cross. Yeah. Amen. Romans chapter 13, we're going to preach this morning about loving one another. Yeah. Romans 13, starting in verse 8, it says, Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Yeah. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the of the law. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Yeah. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and in being. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make yeah. not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Yeah. Lord, we thank you this morning for, first of all, your love. Lord, because without you loving us, we would not have salvation that we have today in Jesus Christ. Lord, we just pray that we would share that love with others. Lord, that we would uh, trust in your word, that we would walk in the light of your word, to do your commandments, Lord, that your love would abide in us. Lord, we just pray this morning that you would help us glean your truth. Speak through me as your mouthpiece. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Verse 8, he says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. To love one another. In other words, the only thing that we should owe another man is our love. Amen? Yeah. Because that is what we owe to all men. We have been partakers of the love of Christ that He has shed upon us abundantly and that Jesus Christ died for our sins. Yeah. And because we are made partakers of that love, now we know how that we ought to love uh, our neighbor. Now we know how we ought to love uh, each other. Amen? Yeah. It is not in the love of the world talks about and the lust of the flesh and the fulfilling of that lust, but it is in uh, the godly love of sacrifice in ourselves and our wants and desires that we might uh, impart to someone else the gift of God, which is His Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Not only imparting that, but imparting His Word. Uh, the Bible says that we need to have our speech with grace, seasoned with salt. Amen? Yeah. That we might give an answer to every man. That we might be able to impart the wisdom of God through His Word to others. Yeah. That is love. Amen? Uh, uh, one of the uh, churches uh, that I was a part of up in the city, the, uh, the, uh, they had these pens with their name and the address, and on the bottom it said, We love you enough to tell you the truth. Yeah. Amen. That's love. Amen. Amen. Love is the truth. It's in truth. It has to be in truth. It cannot be in, in a lie or then it's not true love. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so to owe anything to someone, we need to owe them love. Amen. Yeah. To give to them that love that we have. Uh, the things that we become indebted in this life, you know, uh, become burdens. They become the things to weigh us down, to keep our minds focused on uh, the work and toil of this life. You know, sometimes people get their lives so much in debt that uh, that's all that they can think about is, is how that they're going to be able to pay those debts. You know, how, you know, I've got to get an extra job or I have to take extra shifts or I have to do this. 
uh, when the Bible tells us, you know, life is not about all these things that we can accumulate. It's about loving one another. Amen. Amen. It's about living the Word of God in our lives. That needs to be the focus in our lives, is how that we can love one another. Look at Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 26. And verse 27, and here's some uh, wisdom from the Word of God. He says in verse 26, Be not thou one of them that strike hands, or of them that are sureties for debts. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? Owe no man anything. You know what? If you don't have the money, don't get it. <laughs> Amen? Uh, that's basically what he's saying because if you can't pay for it, then why should you have to give up uh, your livelihood for things that you really don't need in the first place? Amen? That's, that's good uh, uh, instruction there from the Word of God. Amen. Instruction of how to live our lives and, and not to become attached to this world. Amen? Amen? And that's instruction that we all need to ponder upon mm -hmm. and meditate upon. Because every time you turn around, there's another uh, offer for a credit card in the mail. You know, there's always something, someone trying, you know, I work next to a, a finance company and on the outside they have a sign saying, come on in and get this loan, you know. There's all these things that want to tie us down to the things of the world when you know what? God wants us to be free. Uh, in His truth. God wants us to be free in this life, to not be entangled with the things and the affections of this life so that we might have that peace and understanding in our lives to be someone that is used of God to help Amen. others. Proverbs chapter 6. You'll turn over there. We studied in Proverbs chapter 13 this morning in our Sunday school class. Uh, and the first thing that I said before we started is a proverb today will keep the devil away. Amen. Mm -hmm. now, Proverbs is full of just practical wisdom and practical knowledge that we can apply in our lives. And you know what? The Proverbs are a good place to read every day to help us grow in the Lord. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 6, starting in verse 1, it says, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself, when thou art come into the hand of thy friend. Go humble thyself, and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. You know what? Satan's job and, and work in this world is to blind the eyes of those uh, that have no faith. And you know what? The things of this world can take your faith. The things of this world can drain you. The burdens of this world can take away your joy and peace that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what? When you are burdened down with finances, when you're burdened down with the cares of this world, it is hard to have that joy. And to have that love in your heart for your neighbor. Mm -hmm. True. Amen? Yes. Amen. And what did he say? He said, in uh, all these things, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet. You know, uh, coveting, that, that's one of the reasons that most people get themselves in trouble in this life. Is because they see what their neighbor has and says, you know what? we got to get one just like them. Mm -hmm. They just bought a new Lexus. We need to go out and buy a new Cadillac, right? Or something of that nature. And people get caught up in the things of this life. And it takes away what we're really put here for. And that is to share the love of God. Amen. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 1. It is very hard and difficult to keep our minds focused on what really life there is about. There are so many things that can distract us from what really uh, is important in this life. Romans chapter 1 and verse 14 it says, 
I am a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Yeah. You know, Paul said he was a debtor. But it wasn't to a bank or to a finance company. He was a debtor to those who were lost because he had something that was given to him that he now wanted to give to others. Amen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen. The love that we have is a sacrificial love that we should have in Jesus Christ. Amen. In other words, God loved, therefore He gave. Amen. Amen. And if we love, then we are going to give. And the Amen. best gift that we can give is ourselves. Amen? Amen. That is the greatest gift that we can give is ourselves. Amen. A little bit of our time. A little bit of our uh, uh, work and effort. Uh, our uh, purpose in our, in our lives. It was We read in, in our Sunday school class this morning... You know, a person can have a desire in their hearts and they can wish for whatever they want to wish for. But it's that diligent soul that is going to be filled. Amen. It's that person who goes out and does it. Amen? Amen. I, you know, people wish for everything. They wish, you know, there's people all over the world that wish they had a million bucks. There's people all over the world that, that wish they had, you know, a, a new house or a new car or this or that. You know what? It's that person that, that realizes the truth of God's Word. It's that person that really realizes what life is about and applies their heart unto knowledge and applies their life unto the Lord that is really going to truly, when their life is over, have something to show for. Amen? Amen? Because you can travel the world your whole life and at the end of your life, your life means nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's that person who gives their life and their self to the Lord and to help those that are around them, to give themselves to others as God gave His Son to us. Amen. That when your life is over, guess what? Your life is going to have meant something. Yes. And people are going to say, you know what? That's a huge gap to fill when they leave this world. Amen. 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 Yeah. Who's going to fill that gap? <laughs> you know? Hey, we need to have that love to share. To be a debtor to those, not a debtor in, in, in our finances, but a debtor in our love to others to share the truth of God's Word with others. Why? Because He tells us in Romans chapter 13 and verse 8, he says, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Amen. You know, everybody's worried about fulfilling the law, right? Mm -hmm. Unless they're just total reprobates. Uh, everybody wants to be good, right? You ask people, uh, well, do you think you're a good person? They're going to say, yeah, you know, I try. I, I try to keep the commandments. I try to do this. You know what? It's all in loving. Amen? That's the fulfillment of the whole law. It's to love. Amen. That's right. It's not in sacrifice. It's not in, in, in just one time a week. Or it's not in just the little things that we do or the big things that we do. It's in everything that we do. Amen. In loving one another. Amen. And he tells us what love does. He says, For thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Because if you truly love your neighbor, you're not going to covet the things that, are, that they have. If you truly love your neighbor, you're not going to bear false witness against them. If you That's truly right. love your neighbor, you're not going to steal from them. That's you're not right. going to kill them. You're not going to commit adultery with their spouse. You're not going to do anything that would harm them because you love them as yourself. Amen. So love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore love is the fulfillment or the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 14.
16, it says, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. He says, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, and that one word is love. Love. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. Amen. You know, how we live is a measure of how we love. Yes. How we live, the actions that we take, you know, the words that we say to others, how we live is a measuring stick of how much we love. Amen. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> that hurts, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It really does. Because so many times we show the, the, the bad things, our actions, and not the good things, as we should. Someone cuts us off and we want to honk at them, and, you know, shake our fist out. The way we live is the measures, measuring stick of how much we love. Look at Colossians chapter 3. You say people are hard to love. Them. You know, I know I'm supposed to love my neighbor, but man, you just don't know my neighbor. <laughs> I mean, it's easy for you to stand up there and preach that we need to love our neighbors as ourselves, but you really have no idea who lives next to me. <laughs> you know? And Brother TJ and Lisa are back there pointing at each other. <laughs> but think about yourself. God loved you before you were ever created. Knowing exactly who you were before you were ever born and knowing exactly everything that you would do in your lifetime that was against him. Yes. And he still loved you. Amen. That's right. And he sent his son to die for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now if we could say I knew everything that someone was going to do in their lifetime that would be to hurt me, would I still invest my time in their life and love them sacrificial. I think most people would say no. I mean, if this person was good, if I knew everything that this person was going to do to hurt me, man, I wouldn't have anything to do with them. But God, <laughs> who commendeth his love to us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. That's right. Yes. Maybe your neighbor wouldn't be so bad if he loved him. Yeah. Maybe if you pray for him and spend time trying to show him how much he cares, yeah. maybe something would change in his life. That's right. And maybe then you'd have a friend instead of an enemy. Yeah. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, it says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies. Amen. You need to full up with mercy. Yeah, Amen. Man. If you're going to love, you're going to have to learn how to be merciful to others. Yes. Mercy is not something that is deserved, okay? God showed mercy upon us, not because we deserved it, but because He's merciful. Amen. Yeah. If we're going to show mercy to others, it's not going to be because they deserve it, it's going to be because we're full of mercy. Yes. Right. Bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, remembering that we also were once sinners. Amen? Yeah. We were also once reprobates. We were also once dead in our trespasses and sins. Right. Meekness, long-suffering. To wit, God is long-suffering to us. Not, uh, I mean, that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah. That is the long suffering of God. Yeah. That's right. Verse 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Yeah. Remember that you're forgiven. Mm -hmm. Amen. That Christ has forgiven you. And verse 14, 
And above all these things, put on charity. Yes. Which is the bond of perfection. Amen. If you want to be perfect, put on charity. Mm -hmm. Amen. Love as Christ has loved you. Yeah. And then look at James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verses 18 through 12. No, that's not right. Verse 8 to 12. Excuse me. We're going to start in verse 18 and go all the way back to 12. <laughs> We're going to read backwards this morning. <laughs> verse 8. Starting in verse 8, it says, If you fulfill the royal law according to the Scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Amen. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin. <clears throat> and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Mm -hmm. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Mm -hmm. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Yeah. We can't have respect of persons in love. Amen? Mm -hmm. Love has to be without partiality. Yeah. If we're going to love, it has to be love and no partiality. No respect of person. Mm -hmm. You can't say, well, I love those who love me. Well, what reward do you have in yeah. that? Yeah. We are to love everyone. Amen. Does that mean we accept their sins? No. Does God accept the sins of man? No. He sent His Son to die for their sins. That's right. So that they might have life. Mm -hmm. And that life that He gives them is not the life that stay, keeps them in their sin, but brings them out of that sin. Amen. So I'm not talking about when I say, as some people do, well, we just need to accept everybody. We just need to all get along. What I'm saying is we need to love them enough to give our lives to giving them what we have. Yes. And that is the truth of God's Word. Amen. That is the truth that God wants them to be saved. Amen. To repent and believe the Gospel. What does He say that we are doing when we love? How can we love unless we put on the Lord Jesus Christ? We have to keep ourselves in the love of Christ. Amen. That means if we have sin in our life, we need to confess them and get them right. Yeah. And if someone is not saved, if someone has never accepted the gift of God's love into their heart and their life, then they don't know how they are to love them. It's only when that person becomes a newborn believer, a newborn Christian in Christ, that they're able to see the amazing love that God has for them. Yeah. And then to know how we are to love others. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us in Romans to put on the armor of God. And how do we do that? It's through the Word of God. Amen? It's through the Word of God that we are able to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against Thee. Yeah. We have to continue to walk in His Word and in His love so that we might be able to love others. Amen. Yeah. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Just as Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting in verse 1, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Mm -hmm. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains, 
and have not charity, I am nothing. Yeah. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Yeah. You say, how could you do all those things and not have charity? But the greatest of all charity is sharing life that we have with others. Yeah. You can give someone all the goods to feed the poor, and if you don't give them Christ, you're not loving them. Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can you love someone without telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done for them? Yeah. To yeah. save them from the devil's head. You say, I give to charity. Great. Tell someone about Jesus. Yeah. Tell someone how that they can know when they die that they have a home in heaven. Amen. Yeah. Because that is true charity. Yeah. Amen. You know what? We're not always going to have the money and the things to give to people. As Peter and John told that lame man, <laughs> silver and gold have I none. But that I have, give up I am to thee. Amen. You know what? We might not always have the goods to give to others, but we do have something that we can give. Amen. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You have faith. You believe the gospel. You understand prophecy. You understand the scriptures. Great. But if you don't share that with others, yeah. can you really say that you love them? Look at 2 Peter chapter 1. <coughs> Second Peter chapter 1. Verses 5 through 11 it says, And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. You see, God wants us to be balanced. Amen. God does not like uh, uh, diverse weights and judgments, does He? Now, He doesn't want us to be have all our attributes set up on one thing. He wants us to be balanced in all things. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Add to your faith virtue, virtue, knowledge, knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience, patience, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Yeah. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Have you forgotten that you've been purged from your sins? Amen. Don't forget that. Because let me tell you, the more that you remember of how God saved you, the more that you remember of how that He forgave your sins and cleansed you, the more you're going to have the purpose in your heart to share that with other people. Amen. And look at 1 John chapter 2 and we'll be through. First John chapter 2, starting in verse 5. It says, But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself, excuse me, also to, so to walk, even as he walked. Yeah. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, 
but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which we have heard, or which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Yeah. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness, or that darkness, hath blinded mm -hmm. his eyes. You know what? The world is full of darkness. Mm -hmm. It's full of ignorance. You know what? We can get caught up in the darkness of the world and forget. You know what? Our brother, the people around us need to know Jesus. Amen. Yeah. We get caught up in the things of the world and, and, and trying to live our lives and make uh, make all the things happen that, you know, the pursuit of happiness. You know what? True happiness comes from God yeah. and being in the center of His will. Mm -hmm. There's rich people that are happy. There's poor people that are happy. There's people that don't have very much at all that are happy because they have the Lord. Yeah. And not only because they have the Lord, but because now that they can share the Lord with others. Mm -hmm. You know what? There was a missionary in, in uh, uh, South America, and there's places in South America you cannot get to in a car. I mean, there's these people that live in villages that if you don't walk to, you're not getting there. And the missionary, he would send out... Uh, correspondence courses and how they would get them to these small villages by plane and they would fly over these little villages and they'd drop all these correspondence courses and tracks out of the plane. He had one man who traveled over 300 miles through dense forests and creeks and all that kind of stuff to come and get more stuff so that he could take it back to his people yeah. and share with them the gospel that he had received from one of those, mm -hmm. those tracks. Amen. You see, in him was the love of God perfected. Amen. Because he loved his brother enough to share the gospel with him. Mm -hmm. You see, you can feed people in this life and and give them clothes to, to clothe them. But unless you give them Jesus, you're really not giving them what they truly need. Man. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. Because if we truly love, then we're not going to cause ill on someone else, but we're going to bring them up, amen? Man. To give them the love of God, which has been given to us. Let's stand. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all the grace that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we just pray that you would help us this morning to open our hearts to your Holy Spirit, that you might truly lead and guide in our hearts, to direct us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Lord, to forgive us of our sins and where we failed you, Lord, to create a clean heart in us, Lord, a right spirit. Lord, that we might truly have the joy of thy salvation. And Lord, to go out from here to be witnesses for you, to show others of how they also can know you as their Savior. Lord, we just pray that if there's anyone here this morning that does not know you, that you would speak to their hearts, that they might call upon you before it's too late. Lord, we love you and thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our altars are open.